a very, very tight election, according to the polls. Um, when we're talking about the markets, though, what are you expecting on this election day? As all of us, we're just kind of trying to figure out what happens next. So I think that we're looking today, at, as you said, it's a, basically a dead heat. We've favored Trump for several months now. The last five days have really taken the confidence out of what was a very low conviction view that Trump was the marginal favorite. At this point, the race is neck and neck. Uh, the Madison Square Garden speech, Harris's performance in the Selzer poll, signs that Harris is gaining strength with Latino and black voters. All of these things suggest to us that the race truly is neck and neck. And that means for us and for our clients, this is an exercise in risk mitigation rather than optimization. People just don't want to be surprised by whatever result happens today. All right. So when you say that people don't want to be surprised, then what are your clients, what are they doing just to avoid the surprise or maybe a negative shock? It sounds like what people are trying to avoid is the candidate that they didn't want to win winning and that somehow impact in their portfolios. I think what you're seeing in the last couple of days are people unwinding a lot of the Trump trade that they laid on in recent weeks. You know, that's perhaps to be expected. You've seen betting markets close in. I think we look at betting markets as kind of an imperfect predictor of the race. It's not a reflection of where voters are, but it's a good reflection of where market participants are. And it's a good direction of, and it's a good sign of directionality. Certainly, you've seen betting markets tighten up. To us, that says that market participants are expecting, hey, this thing's a lot more competitive than it was even 10, 14 days ago. All right, so a lot more competitive it was in your mind than it was just a few days ago. With that in mind, um, what are you expecting from the currency market and the bond market that seem to have, in, at least in recent days, moved higher? Um, we're talking about yields on bonds um, and currency actually moving lower. I, I, I'm kind of mixing that up there a bit. Um, but both of those markets moving on the idea that Trump was the favorite. What, do you, what kind of action do you see there? So I don't want to get too far out over my skis on this. Uh, what I will say is you're seeing what you're seeing across the market, people recognizing that Trump is, you know, perhaps still marginally a favorite in many people's eyes. I think that a lot of participants, a lot of investors now are saying, well, you know, maybe we were overbidding. We were overpricing the advantages that Trump had built in, the advantages that he had in the Electoral College, the advantages that he had in top issue polling. Those things seem to be winnowing today, and people are paying a lot more attention to Harris's strength in ground game, her strength in get out the vote. And I think that's leading people to really pivot their expectations, maybe back towards realizing that Harris has just as good a chance as Trump to win this thing. All right. Uh, a lot of speculation that we won't see an immediate resolution to this election, that it could drag on for a few more days. Um, in your mind, how does that impact the investor? I think uncertainty is a negative in any scenario. It doesn't matter who wins if you look at this as being something that's not going to be settled for quite a while. The one thing that I will say is you, you're probably going to get some signs of the way this race is unfolding on Election Day. Georgia and North Carolina, both going to report very quickly. I think Michigan, uh, uh, Wisconsin, you're going to have a good idea of who won those races probably by the middle of the night, if not early in the, in the hours of Wednesday. The issue becomes Pennsylvania. It becomes places where the vote count is going to be delayed and might take several days. If the race is coming down to a single state, I think that creates a lot of uncertainty, it creates volatility for equity markets. It creates this sense among investors that do I second guess the moves that I made right before the election? Do people start trying to shift their position? Does that create a little bit of churn in markets? I think that's the biggest impact we're watching for.